Later this week, we're gonna be doing some demonstrations using clips to show how it can make replacing a broken tile up on the roof easier. But I figured as long as we're doing that and laying out this mock-up with tile, we might as well take the opportunity to do a very quick run-through of layout on a very easy roof. You can follow along if you have a manual on page 26 of the TRI Clay and Concrete Roof Tile Installation Manual. If you don't have a manual, you can go to tileroofing.org and download it from our resources page. The first thing that we're going to do is determine where our first row is going to go and where our top row is going to go. We've already got our riser metal on, we've already got our ridge nailer board on, and so we just need to figure out where our first row and our top row is going to go, then we'll worry about layout after that. To determine that, the first thing we're going to do is take one of these medium profile tiles that we're using and we'll flip it on its face. You can see that here at the bottom, these are the weather checks. There's a large weather check that nests into the tile on the preceding row, which there is none on the first row. And then the top shows where the lugs are. On the bottom, that means this area here between these two weather checks, the large one will overhang the e riser metal, and the small one will kind of rest on it. That's the starting point. And the end point will be up here at the top where it will rest on the batten. So we need to know the distance between this slot and the bottom side of that lug where the batten will be. And if we put our tape measure on there, we're right at about 15 inches, maybe just a little shy of 15 inches, but that'll give us a very nice starting row. So we're going to measure up 15 inches on the left side of the mock-up. Make a V. And chop a line in between those two marks. And now we know where our first row is going to be. For our top row, what we need to know is how much space do we need between the ridge nailer board and the top of our last batten. That distance is going to relate to how thick the lugs are on the tile. And it's important that we measure every tile that we install. They can vary quite a bit. The tile that we're using today has a lug that is one inch thick or wide from top to bottom. So we know up here that we need a minimum of one inch. And let's plan on going an inch and a half just to give ourselves some flexibility. So I'm going to measure down an inch and a half from the nailer board on the left side of the mock-up. And we'll do the same thing over here on the right side of the mock-up, an inch and a half down from the nailer board. Again, we're going to chop a line in between those two points. And now we know where our top row is going to be. We've got a rule and a goal here that we're going to follow. The rule is that we have a required three inch head lap on the tile. That's how much does the next row overlap the preceding row? Minimum requirement of three inches unless precluded by design. Almost every tile that you'll work with will be required to have that three inch head lap. For today, we're working with a 17 inch concrete roof tile. It has a minimum head lap of three inches. 17 inches long for the tile, that means a maximum exposure of 14 inches. That's a hard and fast rule. The goal is to have those tile be laid out on the roof with even increments or even row spacing and not have a short course up at the ridge. There's several ways to do layout and have equal increments in your row spacing. One way is to follow the roof layout quick reference chart in the manual on page 27. Another common way roofers will do their layout is they'll have their tape measure marked at the increments appropriate for the tile that they're using. It's important that we adjust for different size tile. But in this case, we're using a 17 inch tile. They would have their tape measure marked at 14 inches, 28 inches, 42 inches, 56 inches, all the way up their tape measure, and they would use the tape measure that way, the same way that we're going to use layout tape. Uh, again, we need to use the properly sized layout tape for the tile. This is 14 inch layout tape, and we're using, again, a 17 inch tile, three inch, that means 14 inch maximum exposure. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one of my red arrows, I'm going to place it right there on the blue chalk line that I made, and I'm going to put a nail right through. I'm not going to stick it, I want to have flexibility in swinging the tape. As I bring the tape measure up to our top line where I want my top row, I can go ahead and tear it off and just use what I need. But at this point, my red arrow is about four or five inches upslope, which the slope ends uh, from the line where I'd like it to be. All I need to do, I don't want to have a short course, I don't want to cut off my lugs, cut off my nail holes. What I want to do is have even row spacing. So I can just swing the tape over until that red arrow aligns with my blue line.
Now we're going to do the same thing coming from the other side. On a larger roof, we can run the tape parallel, or it can be because it doesn't matter. The geometry will be the same. I'm going to chalk lines over the points of the arrows on the tape. On each row. And now we're ready to install the ads. The curiosity might be how far apart are our rows. The reality is I don't know. The geometry does it for me, but I can measure them. And if I go from the blue line to the blue line, these rows are about 13 and 3 eighths. That's tough math to do to divide this space or any space by the English system. But by using the geometry of the swing tape, we don't have to do that. And we let the tape do it for us.